Welcome to this brief training video on building fire resilient homes. We've designed this video to be a helpful guide for you to improve the wildfire resilience of the homes you build for your customers. As residents of the Northwest, we've all seen wildfires increase in frequency and intensity year after year, often with disastrous consequences for homeowners. In the housing market, we're seeing this start to shift the priorities of what customers are looking for in their next purchase. To stay competitive and ensure the best outcomes for customers, Northwest builders will need to stay updated on the best ways to construct fire resistant and resilient homes. During this video, we'll cover these best practices for fire resilient construction and point you to additional resources to learn more. The Oregon Residential Specialty Code provides an optional set of wildfire hazard mitigation codes for local jurisdictions to adopt at their discretion. A couple of cities have adopted this code, known as Section R327.4, to their local building code requirements. These codes apply to homes that are located in wildfire hazard zones established by the Oregon Department of Forestry. This code provides a great place to start learning about wildfire resilient construction techniques. Even if you're building in a jurisdiction that does not require wildfire hazard mitigation, you may still want to consider these building strategies and best practices. As we've seen in recent years, wind-driven wildfires can spread into urban areas due to dry conditions and increased temperatures. Section R327.4 in the 2021 ORSC outlines wildfire hazard mitigation requirements for homes built within wildfire hazard zones. Some of these requirements include roofing and gutters must be made with non-combustible materials. Attic ventilation requires the elimination of attic vents on the bottom of a soffit if it is 12 feet or less from soffit to grade. Vent screens must have openings no larger than 1 16th to 1 8th inch and be non-combustible and non-corrosive. Walls must be clad with non-combustible materials or ignition resistant materials. Exterior structures must also be constructed with non-combustible or ignition resistant materials. These structures could include porch ceilings less than 12 feet above grade, floor projections, or decks and walking surfaces which are more than 30 inches and less than 12 feet above grade. Windows must either be tempered glass, multi-layered, or glass block and have a 20-minute fire rating. You can read a full list of the wildfire hazard mitigation requirements on the International Code Council website. In addition to these code strategies, there are a number of other best practices that you can implement to provide your customers with a fire-hardened, resilient home. You can separate a combustible fence from the house or upgrade the last five feet of the fence to a non-combustible material to reduce the chance of the fence bridging a fire towards the home. Another option is to install non-combustible gutter leaf guards to prevent the accumulation of leaves and debris, which can act as a fire starter if windblown embers land in the gutter or on the roofs. You'll also want to avoid installing flammable plants with high resin content near the home and instead choose fire retardant plant species that resist ignition. You can do this by selecting high moisture plants that grow close to the ground and have a low sap or resin content. You can hardscape the perimeter of the home by not installing wood mulch products within five feet of all structures and instead use non-combustible products such as stone or pea gravel. Fire resistance also includes planting hardwood trees and avoiding flammable evergreen species like firs or cedars. You may choose to follow what's known as defensible space guidelines when designing and installing landscape. This is especially relevant for homes on large lots or in rural locations. With these conditions, and when the lot permits, you'll ideally want to create a 10 to 30 foot safe perimeter around the home. There are some fire hardening measures that can also improve the energy savings and comfort of a home. Energy Trust of Oregon's new homes program, EPS New Construction, offers financial incentives to builders to construct energy efficient homes. There are three energy saving, fire resilient measures which qualify for cash incentives with Energy Trust of Oregon. The first of which is triple pane windows. Adding a third pane of glass offers greater resiliency by adding another layer of protection from a fire burning outside, especially if the glass is tempered. Windows are prone to break when exposed to extreme heat, and a third pane of glass acts as an additional layer to help prevent burning embers from entering the home. 
Homeowners will also appreciate the added energy efficiency benefit provided by triple pane windows and the fact that they help create a quieter home by keeping outside noises to a minimum. The second measure is continuous exterior rigid insulation, which offers a great way to make new homes more resilient to wildfires by adding another layer to the walls, which protects the wood structure. Exterior rigid insulation also increases the R value compared with a typical wall assembly thereby increasing the energy efficiency of the home. Not only does this increase resiliency and efficiency, it also makes the house more airtight, which helps improve the indoor air quality for the home occupants. The third measure is unvented attics. Incorporating an unvented attic into a home means that the thermal boundary, in other words, the insulation and the air barrier, moves from the traditional location just above the ceiling up to the roof line, and you create a sealed or unvented attic. Vent openings can put a building at risk during wildfires because they can allow embers to enter the home and ignite the wood structure from within. Unvented attics also save energy by having any ductwork located in the attic now be included within the thermal boundary. This helps protect the ductwork from being exposed to the more extreme temperatures found outside the thermal boundary, like the hot and cold temperatures often found in a typical vented attic. There are excellent training courses and resources available online to learn more about best practices for adding exterior rigid wall insulation or building unvented attics. You can also refer to the 2021 ORSC section R806.5, which outlines the requirements for unvented attic and unvented enclosed rafter assemblies as another resource. To learn more about Energy Trust's fire resilient incentive offerings, please visit their Build an Energy Efficient Home webpage. There are opportunities to help homeowners and businesses incorporate some of these fire hardening measures. One is a grant program created by the Oregon Legislature. House Bill 5006 provides grant money to incorporate fire hardening improvements for rebuilding homes and businesses which burned during the 2020 wildfires. Visit this Building Codes Division webpage to learn more. Another opportunity for rebuilding after the 2020 wildfires is the Energy Efficient Wildfire Rebuilding Initiative, available through the Oregon Department of Energy. Depending on when the home was originally built, different historic building codes apply to the rebuilt structures. Cash incentives will be available for homes rebuilt with higher levels of energy efficiency than was required by the applicable historic code. Please visit this Oregon Department of Energy webpage to learn more details. You'll find links to all of the resources mentioned in this video in the description below. Thank you for joining us for this video on building fire resilient homes. We hope you've gained some valuable information and we encourage you to explore additional Earth Advantage training opportunities.